being such an advocate for electric culture and being a vegetable farmer for about 11 years now for a living um, leads me to want to get into this little taboo topic of uh, like huge vegetables in the world of electric culture. I see it promoted kind of as a real focal point, um, especially like huge zucchinis and stuff like that when like it's experienced gardeners and farmers for sure and, and chefs even like they know that that happens like in a day or overnight that's usually in the market garden world considered a little bit of a failure or an inattention to detail or you missed one um it's not something we would look at as a win per se the seeds get large and tough um Anything that produces a flower and a fruit, once it gets past its apex of maturity, starts focusing on the seed and procreation. So that energy is going into that seed. The, the flesh to skin ratio is different. Um, the skin gets more rubbery. And this is the same with uh, cucumbers, beans, eggplant, a lot of crops. There are some crops that like getting bigger getting bigger versions of them would be considered advantageous mostly roots like a big beet is great a big turnip um, a big sweet potato but bigger is not better in the case of usability and, and taste and flavor especially if you're a market gardener and, and that's what we are so I kind of have that focal point sometimes in mind um, and I want to see these systems employed in market gardens so I just want to delineate between all the amazing benefits that the electroculture systems would have, which would be more like expedient growth, utilization of soil nutrients, um, uh, pest and disease resistance, vibrance, uh, flavor, nutrient density, high vibrations. These are the things that it brings to the table. 